All Unbelievable. Right. So let's bring in Benjamin Netanyahu on a different note. He's the former prime minister and maybe future prime minister of Israel. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, great to see you. I know as, as uh, you are very familiar with American politics and American issues and immigration means a lot, but I know first and foremost, you're as concerned as many other clear-thinking people about the deal we're about to re-enter with, uh, with Iran on this nuclear proliferation. Could you tell me what your greatest concern is at this hour? I think this is a horrible deal, a dangerous deal, that will pave Iran's path with gold, a golden paved highway to a nuclear arsenal. If Iran has nuclear weapons, they don't merely threaten my country, Israel, or the entire Middle East and America's allies. They threaten you directly because simultaneously with developing nuclear weapons, they're developing the means to deliver them yep. across continents. So you could have an Iran governed by these fanatic ayatollahs who will hold every American city hostage to nuclear weapons. I think this is a threat to the peace of the world, and that's what this horrible deal facilitates. It's even worse than the first one. Why? Why is it worse? Well, because, you know, President Obama, uh, in a moment of candor, said in a PBS interview in 2015 that by two, 2027, that's uh, five years from now, uh, Iran will have a breakout time to a bomb that is near zero. That's his words, not mine. And he was right. This deal is much closer to that time frame, and it gives Iran, right now, within two years, they can develop up to four, within four years, starting two years from now, they can develop added enrichment capacity of uranium, 3,500, 3,500 advanced centrifuges that each is 10 to 20 times stronger and more effective than the centrifuges that they have. They have about 5,000, so you're adding an enormous capacity to enrich uranium. That's the critical element of making nuclear bombs. The right. deal gives it to them. It gives them uh, right now, hundreds of billions of dollars, and by the end of the agreement, a trillion dollars to pursue their terror and aggression against everyone, against you and against us. Yeah. This is what the deal gives them. What does it ask of them? Nothing. It doesn't ask of them to change their behavior, to stop terror, to stop calling for the destruction of Israel, to stop bombing the, the neighborhood countries like Saudi Arabia and the, the Gulf states. It doesn't ask of them anything. It doesn't stop their development of ballistic missiles. It doesn't even guarantee that their sites will be inspected. This is a deal that gives them everything to threaten all of us and gives nothing to us in return. So that's why you're calling on the White House to reject the the nuke deal but you know the obama biden administration people a lot of them are now in the biden harris administration they want that deal have you called joe biden have you called kamala harris have you called anybody in authority and said hey are you guys crazy i've talked to uh president biden when he was vice president and when he was president uh i've talked to him many times about the danger of this deal. Uh, I think that uh, right now you can talk to the administration, but I think from their point of view, this deal is done. What's important yeah. is to understand this. Deal or no deal, deal or no deal, I will do, if I'm elected, and I think there's a very good chance that I'll be reelected in, in a few months from now, we have to ensure that we will take whatever action is necessary wow. to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. That's my commitment. I've devoted a good part of my life to slowing down, holding back their nuclear program in a variety of means, and I'm going to continue that way. And I encourage uh, the American uh, uh, public and the American people, the American representatives, I hope the administration too, but I, I don't give it a big chance, to not to sign the deal, but if it's signed, to get out of it as soon as possible. That's already happened before. It could happen again. Mr. Prime Minister, we know that during the process of this negotiation period, the Iranian negotiator for this deal has been bragging that they've missed the deadline 11 different times uh, in Vienna with the talks. The Biden administration has allowed them to do that with no consequence. We also know that they've tried to carry out a number of assassinations on American soil throughout this process. As you said, it seems like the deal is going to get done by the Biden administration. The Middle East now, thanks to the Abraham Accords, is a different place than it was two years ago. So how are the countries in the region working together in ways they weren't before to prevent, to prevent Iran from gaining a nuclear weapon and continuing their terror? Well, you're, you're quite right that uh, we're united in the region. Uh, we live here. We understand the enormous threat to have these 
these uh, fanatic ayatollahs armed with nuclear weapons that would be aimed initially at us uh, and subsequently at you. Uh, we all understand that. Uh, I did fashion, with President Trump's help, uh, the uh, Abraham Accords that made peace between Israel and four Arab states. That peace was based not only on the good things that Israeli technology can bring to their lives, to the lives of their citizens, but also right. on the fact that we share a common interest to stop Iran. How to stop Iran is something I won't get into it, but I will say this. If you don't have a, a credible military threat, against Iran's nuclear program, you essentially have nothing. Uh, when you had a credible military threat or action, as we took against Iraq and against Syria's uh, attempt to uh, develop nuclear weapons, and as you threatened Gaddafi, that's why he didn't develop, it worked. You didn't have such a threat against North Korea, it didn't work. They signed the NPT, uh, you know, the Non-Proliferation Treaty, it's worthless. These people cheat. And if you get to the point where they are inches away from uh, loading their enriched uranium into the nuclear cores of nuclear bombs, you have nothing you can do. So you have to be prepared. We all have to be prepared to take whatever action is necessary, with a deal, without a deal. I'm, I'm not going to be, and Israel will not be a signatory or a partner to this horrible deal. We will do whatever is necessary to defend our country, to defend our citizens, and I'm telling you, to defend the world. And I'll tell you, Mr. Prime Minister, if they are allowed to go back on the world stage economically and sell their oil, then goes Hamas goes on steroids, Hezbollah goes on steroids, all the Islamic Jihad goes on steroids. It inflames the entire region. The question is, with the weaponized uranium, true or false, it goes to Russia. And true or false, Russia is going to give it back to Iran if the next president decides to tear up this deal like President Trump did. That is going to be... The, the leverage that they use it with this administration uses against future administrations. Well, I, I think what you're going to see is not only the violation of, well, you don't have to violate. I mean, they're basically giving them a freebie. They're giving him hundreds of billions of dollars of, uh, of, uh, of money to continue to pursue their terror and their aggression. And there are a hundred ways to go around it. You're, you're quite right. But I think that there's one more thing. You asked me about the neighborhood, the, the, the Arab countries in the yep. neighborhood and others. Let me tell you what will happen. Because they see that the U.S. Uh, is we not standing up to Iran, I tell you, and I'm sorry to say this, I said this in my speech before the joint session of Congress, and I'm telling you this again. What will happen is that other countries in the Middle East will pursue nuclear weapons of their own. So this deal, which is supposed to stop nuclear weapon, well, weapons in the Middle East and the proliferation of uh, uh, weapons of mass death in this neighborhood and beyond, it will actually cause the proliferation of nuclear weapons. And the Middle East will be crisscrossed by nuclear tripwires. It will make the Middle East a powder keg, a nuclear powder keg. This is, what shall I tell you, use a, a clinical term from psychiatry, this is madness. This is the height of folly. Yeah. This should not be done. If it's done, right. you have to get out of it as soon as you can. And in any case, develop the combination of a credible military threat coupled with paralyzing sanctions, crippling sanctions. That's the only way you're going to stop this. Yeah. But the deal is lifting sanctions, Mr. Prime Minister, and that's the problem. Avoiding Thanks for joining us. Hopefully people are listening to you. But for some reason, Biden administration knows everything you're saying, and they still want to do the deal. And they're not looking to get it ratified. They're just looking to sign it. Thanks, Mr. Prime Minister. Appreciate it. Thank you.